Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365, wisdom for every day of our lives. And today, my friend, we are on Proverbs 18, and we will be exploring verses 1 through 24, reading through it and then summarizing the chapter. But first, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord God. Thank you, my God. Thank you that you are God that you are not silent. You speak and you ask us to develop a listening ear. Yes, my Lord. God, you make commandments and you ask us to obey, my Father. You, God, lead and you ask us to follow. Thank you that you are more likely to speak with us in a gentle whisper than in a loud voice. Thank you, my Lord, for the leading and the guidance. Thank you for this amazing wisdom that you impart in us every single day, my Father. Thank you so much for who you are and how you lead your children with so much love, so much care, so much gentleness, my Father. Thank you, my Father, that you rather that we learn by revelation and not by the crushing, my Father, of a rebellious heart. Thank you, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. So my friend, we are on uh, chapter 18 of Proverbs and we, are, uh, we will be uh, reading from verses 1 through 24. Let us begin. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding but delight in airing their own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice. The lips of fools bring them strife and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The human spirit can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear? The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross-examines, casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like a bar barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled with the harvest of their lips. It will eat its fruits. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So the guiding principles of chapter 17 of Proverbs it serves as a timeless compass for wise living. Its principles guide us to seek peace, value wisdom, uphold justice, and cultivate sound relationships. It teaches us that the path to a rewarding life lies not in material gain, but in righteous living, the supremacy of tranquility. The chapter opens with a poignant 
comparison between a peaceful meal with little and a house full of feasting coupled with strife. The wisdom here suggests that contentment and tranquility supersede material wealth. This chapter encapsulates a rich trove of wisdom, emphasizing the power of words, the value of true companionship, and the importance of humility. It underscores that each individual has the power to shape their life and relationships through wise speech and actions. It reminds us of God's impartial justice and the rewards of seeking wisdom and understanding. The opening verses of um, the lines of or verses one through two, it describes the individual who isolates himself out of self-interest and who has no regard for sound judgment. Such a person reveals their folly, demonstrating an unwillingness to understand and appreciate the wisdom of others. Wisdom versus foolishness found in verses three to seven. This contrasts the wicked and the foolish with the wise. The wicked bring disdain upon themselves and fools are enslaved by their own words. Such foolish speech leads to ruin and traps the speaker. The power of knowledge and discernment found in verses eight through nine. It suggests that gossip is enticing, but ultimately harmful. And verse nine equates laziness with destruction. These verses underscore the importance of wise words and diligent actions. The fortress of the Lord found in verses 10 through 11, these verses, you can see and you can hear the strength of them, the trusting in the Lord versus relying on one's wealth. The Lord's name is a strong tower where the righteous find safety, while worth, while wealth, excuse me, provides a false sense of security. Pride before destruction, found in verses 12 through 13. Pride is highlighted as a precursor to a downfall, and making judgments without hearing a matter out, of, out is described as folly. The importance of humility and thoughtful judgment is stressed. The power of the spoken word, verses 14 through 21. These verses delve into the power of the spirit to endure sickness, the implications of understanding and discerning hearts, and the consequences of both wise and foolish speech. They emphasize the life and the death power of the tongue. The blessing of a true friend found in verses 22 through 24. And these verses highlight the value of finding a wife and the steadfastness of a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The significance of true companionship and marital bliss is underlined. Proverbs 18 offers a rich collection of wisdom dealing with the significance of words, the consequences of isolation and folly, and the importance of true wisdom. The chapter stresses the impact of speech, the perils of conflict, and the impartiality of divine justice. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, your precious Son, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for your blood. Thank you, Father God, for the wisdom that you are imparting in us, in us every single day. These principles for living, my Father, are very important. And sometimes we just have to return to basics, Lord God, and refresh our souls, refresh our spirit, and refresh our mind with these principles that are truly, they will never go out of style. And they are truly the word of God in true fruition, the word of God in the true sense. Thank you so much, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory today and always. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine. I also encourage you to dance in the rain. Also, I remind you to drive polite. If you're driving a vehicle, remember to drive polite. And I also remind you to keep on smiling. Why should you smile? Because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again. Have a blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, 
the blessings, the peace, the joy. I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy. And yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.